good evening to all i am honored to be a part of coin designia lecture series organized by mmba before we start i would like to extend a warm welcome to all members respected president general secretary and all the office bearers of mmba we are grateful to our chief guest speaker mr isaac mohan lal sir senior advocate who is the hero of today's session who is going to enlighten us on the topic effective legal communication which is going to be a very interesting and interactive session sir we welcome you sir yeah, thank you so much i would like to welcome mr srinivasan raghavan sir president mmba to give his welcome address welcome sir happy evening to one and all mmba has been organizing this lecture series from its since its inception onwards and when we have commenced our journey from 15th year onwards we have named it as queen decennial series and it will be going on till 19th year of mmb this prestigious lecture series is mainly meant to enrich the members of the bar and to inculcate various skills which an advocate requires we normally invite advocates of eminence and judges of erudition and eminence to deliver the speeches and the last occasion when we requested mr isaac mohan lal founder president mmba to give you a topic he said let me avoid any lecture oriented speech rather he was more keen on a kind of interactive session which we felt is the need of the hour and when we further discuss about the topic for deliberation mr isaac mongalal was very firm and particular in this topic because we feel the need of the hour very much now because communication is something more than what is called art of cross examination of advocacy or he will explain rather even the persuasion of argument so this part of the legal communication assumes much more importance in our day to day life and there could be no befitting person than mr isa mogalal because we have been seeing him in action at least from 2004 onwards i have never seen isa raising a voice unless there is a necessity i never seen mr isa not to raise voice when it is required i have never seen isa mogalal unnecessarily using his body language to make the judge irritated so as i said um, mr isaac mogalal has been an epitome of uh, how when an advocate should conduct himself in the court i am not exaggerating whatever i say is 100% uh, uh, what we have experienced and out of my heart so there could be no better person than mr isaac mogalal to speak and teach what is called an effective legal communication i don't want to decipher the details of the topic which is always uh, the topic open to this guest of honor of today so on behalf of mmba though we are welcoming our own 500 president i don't want to miss the chance of welcoming mr isaac mongalal let us please welcome him by an applause and i welcome the past president of mmba ms krishnaveni senior advocate mr t s r venkatramana senior advocate mr a r mugam senior counsel and all other respectable advocates who have come here amidst their tight schedule and i welcome all always <coughs> the darling of the bar mr anand venkatesh to be here and those who are going to miss the function today are going to miss a live uh, program anyhow we are going to telecast and upload it in the youtube so don't miss it i am sure that uh, mr isaac bogalal will give a topic which will make us an expert in an effective communication legal as well as official with this note i welcome onandal thank you very much thank you for your warm words of welcome sir as a token of respect love and admiration of guest speaker of the day i may request president of mmba mr srinivas ragon to present the memento to the guest speaker
and we also request general secretary of mmba mr ayram k selvakuma to admire the guest speaker of the day with a shawl mmba president is giving the memento to the honorable justice ananda vengadesh on behalf of mmb <laughs> thank you the guest speaker of the day mr isaac mohan lal sir is celebrating his birthday few days ago and to mark a special occasion he offered a few books to the mmb library on behalf of mr isaac chandra i request his associates to hand over the books to the president of mmb thank you so much isa kla chambers and associates now i would like to welcome our chief speaker mr isaac mohan lal sir senior advocate to start an interactive sessions on the topic effective legal communication with our members welcoming sir mr president honorable mr justice anand venkatesh office bearers of mmba learned senior advocates and beloved friends at the bar a very good evening to all of you the topic is very much essential and indispensable for lawyers effective legal communication probably in every walk of life we need uh, some sort of communication but which profession needs it the most is the legal profession communication is not as we normally understand only the verbal communication but so far as the lawyer is concerned he is always a physically present in the court he communicates in multiple ways before the court he communicates in several ways before the litigant public the clients and he still communicates more with his comrades the lawyers every time when we i always feel that when we start wearing this uh, coat and the band we become totally a different personality altogether i always believe that even your gait should change you should walk upright that is the foremost of all communications because just as krishna here beautifully says the only persons who have the privilege or rather the license to represent another co human being before an authority including the court is the lawyer no one else is constitutionally recognized as the representative of another co human being so the moment when you wear this robes you assume a totally different role you become the communicator you become the communicator for the oppressed the persons who are deprived of justice before the court so every act of yours every part of your demeanor really is a sense of communication obviously in the court we normally start our arguments with the verbal communication but if we read some literature on this communication about lawyers we have immense uh, literature on the people about the people who had put in lot of experience both on the bench as well as in the bar first of all i would say that this art of communication can be classified into three number 1 your communication with the clients number 2 you are communication with the courts number 3 you are communication as a professional in the society and more particularly among the comrades when we talk about this clients communication who comes to as as a client a person who is either denied justice or a person who is wanted in some sense because of the societal problems or family problems or whatever problems he comes to the office to meet the lawyer with some kind of grievance and how the lawyer behaves with the client matters a lot 
first of all in my experience because i am here only to just to share my experience because i don't i said i don't have the expertise but a bit of experience as a lawyer over the last 30 years when a client comes to us first of all by the look of you he must gain confidence he might have been put to oppression by the police or he might have been suppressed by some authorities or he might have expected something which is denied by the society or by someone he comes to you expecting some kind of solution as a redress when he comes and meets you suppose you give a very dull boring look what will be his impression it seems that this lawyer is more oppressed more suppressed than myself that should not be the feeling secondly every client when he comes he would just tell out vent out his grievances many of us i have seen have the habit of retarding saying that uh, why did you do that why you did not do that and all these kinds of reactions by the lawyer actually augments his grievances when he comes expecting some solution some idea or opinion when you react with such kind of uh, remarks you should have done that but you failed to do that therefore you are landing into the problem this and that these are all the, all the ways of communication first of all in my experience i would say you must give a very very patient hearing to him first and foremost he must feel that i have a person here who is willing to listen to my grievances his wife in the family would not have lent her ears some authority would not have the patience to listen to his grievances but when he comes to the lawyer and the lawyer listening to his grievances that will be the foremost communication with the with the client not you are not communicating you are simply listening and listening itself is the greatest communication to the client he feels that there is someone in this world who is willing to listen to my problem second is when you gather the details or hear the grievance of this person certainly your legal mind will start working you will be thinking that this is the law that is the law which would be either against him or for him very often what we do is that we immediately start uh, discussing with him about the legal issues and either terrify him by quoting some provisions of law or makes him wobble in his mind without giving a clear cut opinion the very important thing is don't try to frighten the client because the most important thing is that at that point of time he might have come here with all kinds of emotions with the all kinds of emotions he would be bursting out his problems to you when you augment his problem by putting forth the things which are terrifying him that is not real communication that's not the job of the lawyer at the same time you should not mislead him also very often what happens is we think about this law that law something against him something in favor of him therefore we creates a sense of doubt there are instances where some of the others have especially lord denny has quoted in his book the discipline of law clients come here not to know your doubts he has come for your opinion therefore there is no point in saying that law is like this or that and there is a doubt this and that law clients come only to know what is your opinion and he further says quoting some authority he says that i may be wrong at times but never in doubt a lawyer can afford to be wrong but don't create any doubt in the mind of the client that is very important thirdly don't give false promises also howsoever great the points may be howsoever strictly fitting into the framework of the law the facts of the case may be still we are not the dispenser of justice we will have to do some framework prepare the case file it bring it before the honorable court then argue the matter and get the result the result may be always either way and the one of the very reasons why we call these judges as honorable judges and my lords and his lordship why just as gods they may do things which you expect at times they may do things which you don't expect also 
therefore there is no point in assuring the client that this would be the result all case so have their own zodiacal chart its own destined fate sometimes we expect that the cases we would win and we would lose just the other way also might happen therefore these are the basic uh, things that we normally in my life i have experienced regarding communication with the clients next coming to court you would have read very many books about uh, the art of advocacy art of cross examination and uh, the framing of your arguments advancing arguments before the court so on and so forth but uh, i would say one or two things uh, i would say one or two things for your interaction number one is the skill of uh, communication in the sense the art of putting forth things in a very very presentable manner very simple but very effective manner because the topic itself is effective communication words are very important what we call in the general uh, sense that uh, vocabulary when we think certain things we must be able to put forth our thoughts in the most effective manner before the court sometimes what we may think something we may put it across without proper words and the communication will be different your thinking will be one thing and what you are trying to communicate would be another so the most important thing is that acquisition of the wealth of vocabulary maybe in our system we have english as the official language and english is not our domestic language it's a foreign language but still we have to acquire the wealth of uh, vocabulary in order to communicate whatever we think to the court and they all say that uh, even shakespeare very beautifully says that the words are superb because they fly high my words fly up my thoughts remain below but words without thoughts never to heaven go therefore whatever words we employ it must have the repository of thoughts it must carry the thoughts otherwise just like rockets without launching pad or launching pad without rockets your thoughts are the launching pad and your words are the rockets without the thought without the launching pad no rocket will go to heaven my words fly up my thoughts remain below but words without thoughts never to heaven go therefore our words must always be resplendent and with or pregnant with full of thoughts we must think before we utter before the court and people say that there are the principles of abc a lawyer should be accurate brief and clear in fact that is the wealth of a lawyer daniel webster he used to say clear statement is the greatest asset at the bar clear statement it may look very simple clear statement but clear clarity is a great 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 gift for a lawyer he must be accurate accurate in the sense not that pointedly telling something you must be very accurate that you need not to beat about the bush you must not have circumlocution you must tell directly the things accurately and how to put forth the things accurately you must be very brief you can't elongate you can't circumlocute you must be very brief so also you must be clear clarity of expression these are all the things which are basic for uh, communication before the court the uh, there is a very famous book by lord denning the as i said in the beginning the discipline of law there is a chapter devoted to the topic the tools of our trade where he says that as a student of mathematics because he did uh, lord denning you might be all knowing you know that uh, he is one of the greatest judges the 20th century has ever produced the greatest and a long time master of the rolls of uh, britain he was a mathematics student in oxford college while he did ms in mathematics then he switches over to law he says the moment i took law i realized that hitherto 
in mathematics i was dealing only with numbers and symbols which had no life at all right now i start using words words are filled with the life therefore from symbols and formula now he switches over to letters and words resplendent and with life for that how did he cultivate he says i started cultivating that uh, skill in usage of letters and words by he starts as he says that he starts reading literary classics starting from chaucer thomas macaulay william shakespeare john milton and so on and so forth the list goes like long if you can read that book also because it is available in the library the discipline of law he has authored five books and one among them is that book he tells us some techniques of how to acquire the skill of vocabulary and how to acquire this skill of abc that is accuracy brevity and clarity once this quality is acquired the job will be very easy for the lawyer and everybody knows that see when you address the court about a case cases are always boring because it is somebody else's problem it is neither your problem nor the judge's problem you bring somebody's problem before the court and presenting it in a monotonous way it will be very dull and boring at the same time everybody is eager to hear stories everybody is interested in hearing stories some others say that it the best lawyers would frame that facts of a particular case into a story and present before the court as a story it will create first of all interest to the listener secondly it will impress in the memory of the judge thirdly it will be easy for him to deliver also this storytelling is one of the very greatest components or greatest techniques of communication even in your day to day life we see that the short stories are very much interesting not these problems cases are always dull therefore try to make in my experience i have experienced that when we frame the particular case into a story and the storytelling before the court that will be very very communicative very very effective communication and one uh, one other he says that uh, richard a posner who has authored a fantastic book on law and literature he says briefs are like stories they have a narrative structure therefore when we hear the stories from the client the case is uh, framed and i try to make the case as a narrative and present it before the court as a story that will have very great appealing force that will be a real effective legal communication and another thing what we experience in courts is not only your verbal argument that matters your demeanor before the court matters a lot sometimes we try to raise our voice sometimes we become very nervous and again raising the voice is also a sign of nervousness we as juniors because we also started from day one gradually we grew up and now so far i am com- concerned completed almost 30 years many of you are in the budding stage now you may ask whether senior advocates do have that nervous problem i confess to you even today i have the nervous problem when i sit in the court waiting for my turn when the previous case is going on the fever starts nervousness will always be there it is not my lone experience it is everybody's experience i hope that everybody would confess nervousness is something which is indispensable for a lawyer and the, what matters is what is the degree of your nervousness suppose you don't have any nervousness at all then you, that means that you are not a lawyer or you are not worried about the case you don't bother about the case when i uh, met a doctor some 5 uh, 6 years ago in chennai he tested uh, my blood pressure on two occasions during vacation and another time during holidays in vacation it was quite all right but uh, during working days my bp was on the higher side 
he said i am normal when i asked this is the reading he immediately responded saying on a working day if your bp is shown as normal you are abnormal therefore any serious lawyer should have blood pressure in the morning and certainly some kind of blood pressure at the time when your case is likely to be called if you have that small nervousness that means that you are a serious lawyer same problem is shared by not less than a person than uh, lord denning himself he writes in his book that he was a very successful lawyer and later on became the justice and uh, the master of the rolls he said till the last moment when i argued the case as a lawyer i had the nervousness when the previous case was going on and he even checked up with the most famous lawyer of those days in england lord mansfield lord mansfield people say that his oratorial skill was so high even as a lawyer because please don't be under the impression that all orator orators are good lawyers it is just the other way around in the court oratorical skill has no value at all because we are not in an elocution competition in the court we are in an argument arguing a case is totally different from speaking in public lord mansfield's arguments are always very very literary it is a flourished with the flowery language and when lord denning interacted with him he said i too have the nervousness therefore juniors you please take it for granted nervousness is not the syndrome only for the juniors it is the hallmark for everyone even the senior lawyers the, once you have that nervousness that means that you are serious secondly we have some techniques also uh, to get over this nervousness because opening sentence is always the trouble we make a mess of the whole case in the opening sentence very often every judge is interested in delivering the judgment by disposing the case the judges may not be interested in the, all your vocabulary or all your oratorical skills all that he wants is business the judge wants to give a disposal to the, disposal to the case how far you would be lending assistance to his job there lies your success therefore when you open the case try to be very brief in telling the court what exactly is the problem then what exactly is the issue then you just support that issue with your factual situation and to bring the law which is applicable to the case when you make a mess at the beginning the whole thing will be a mess therefore a lawyer should have first when he raises for the case he should have a grounding on the or his feet should be grounded properly what is to be done for that small some small small techniques the in our days the seniors would used to say the best way is just to utter a few sentences what are those sentences the best thing would be memorize your prayer just utter the prayer there you will be able to utter two or three sentences and then you will gain the ground thereafter you will be stable but today we are witnessing in the courts uh, i take the apology of his lordship justice anand venkatesh because uh, when we attended a bar association of india meeting conference no judges were permitted there fali nariman was the chairperson of that uh, conference he said we have consciously kept the judges away because we don't want the judges presence during such kinds of interactions because our we will not feel free again probably that is the reason why the president also avoided inviting the judges <laughs> but anyhow we must say judges also do not have the patience nowadays to listen to the lawyer the moment a lawyer stands up then they will pour them with, pour the lawyers with questions what is the, what's the point what is the matter about what is your prayer what is the right for that is not a good idea then juniors will never develop during a uh, last month when i had an occasion to meet a judge of this honorable court a very fantastic judge of this honorable court in a private function uh, we were just sharing with what's happening in the court i told the judge you are perfectly all right you are the best of all judges here but the problem is that you don't allow the lawyers to speak 
and it's so far we are concerned it's all right the less we are allowed to speak the better for us because court will take care of juniors also are protected by their judge he's a very brilliant very um, smart judge who will get the point directly and deliver the judgment but what ultimately the junior will think it's all the judge's business i did not have a role in this uh, judgment at all and he he was very gracious enough he said from tomorrow onwards i will permit the lawyers to speak juniors should be allowed to speak let them speak nonsense they should be allowed to speak unless they are allowed to speak they will never develop this communication skills at all you can't it is just like asking a boy to get and stand by the side of a swimming pool and just teaching him the grammar of swimming without letting him into the pool he will never learn therefore juniors should be allowed to speak but when the juniors are given the chance they should also speak that is very important don't bother about the judges comments because judges are there only to pass comments and lawyers are paid to receive the comments nothing to worry about that have some kinds of techniques of your own i am just saying that my experience i used to learn the prayer by heart so as to open the case then i will gain the ground then we can go to go into the case likewise this is one aspect of the matter second is you never uh, don't show your exuberance or your uh, scholastic skills or your knowledge about the law before the court that all that is not required we are in a cause judges are also interested in your cause you are interested in your cause we are all in a collective business of dispensation of justice it is not a platform for us to show your bombastic vocabulary style or your elocution style it's not like that be very straight and your demeanor also matters a lot i have been often seeing here nowadays probably the lawyers who the young lawyers who come from the national law schools they may often think that they have sufficient research skills they know how to operate the gadgets at the fingertips all the authorities come they have some hold over the authorities they know they think that they know everything and they just uh, try to teach the judge please for heaven's sake don't try don't make that attempt at all no judge would be interested no opponent would be interested in your attempt of teaching the court we are not here as teachers at times the silence speaks louder nowadays you must be very very careful because people are all watching because of the digital world your arguments are witnessed throughout the world by anybody interested even by the litigant therefore every utterance every word every demeanor of yours is matter mattering there don't ever try to teach that as though this the judge doesn't know the judge let us assume the judge doesn't know but your presumption is that the judge knows everything you must pay due respect to the judge because it is the court which is the collective sitting the judge may be at the pedestal but it's a collective organ that is called court when you start saying something don't be very loud but you must be bold what i'm trying to say is that you must be bold but never rude boldness is one is one of the very important characteristics of a lawyer but that boldness should be the reflection of your courage to argue not the exposition of your so called knowledge without courage you can't do anything because after all the client why he comes to you he is incapable either because of his less communicative skill or his fear in the court he engages you because you have the courage winston churchill very beautifully said in those days the word courage has rightly been esteemed as the best of human qualities because it is the quality that guarantees all others a lawyer should be most courageous very bold but at the same time he should not be rude he should not be loud his sound should be to the decibel level of reaching the ears of the judge it must be understandable to the judge you can't try to browbeat you can't try to assert something like that it's all unknown to the profession of law because we always mistake and we of i often witness in courts nowadays maybe because of the convent education for the new youngsters 
and they are a national law school education i have seen them saying that when the judge tells something no 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 these are all very very bad uh, expressions you can't say no to a judge howsoever critical the situation would be howsoever to a corner you are pushed still you can't use the word no against the court on the other hand i have seen especially k k venugopal the former attorney general who is in the 95 or 96 years old now i have witnessed him in very many cases even the cases where i had engaged when the judge is telling something which is completely contrary to the facts simple exhibition of his ignorance and this man would say it is so my lord it is so my lord and we would get angry after having paid him such a huge amount he is this man is saying yes my lord is it's my lord but after a few minutes you will understand that he will just go around and come back to the point and again convince the court on the same point but his response is it is so my lord it is so my lord see this is the way because there are two egos involved in a court one is the ego of the judge the other is the ego of the lawyer but you must always remember the ego of the judge is big enough and at the end it is he who must deliver the judgment not you therefore this lesser ego must always accept the greater ego and another thing very important is judge is poor judge is at the top alone you are in the midst of a crowd you are very strong as a multitude but he is in solitude that you must always remember therefore when you utter something you say no 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 then the whole multitude believes that the judge is wrong and the judge will think the whole multitude now understands that i am wrong that should never be the impression this is a very poor communication skill say politely lord subject to correction may i say this my lord or you can say that yes your lordship is perfectly right but slightly different you can say this correction is not i don't say that you can't correct but there is a polite courteous way of correction you can't affront the judge this is very important thirdly the way in which you stand before the court see at times judges look at you the way you raise in the court matters a lot suppose you sluggishly raise then the judge himself will feel this man has got a poor case probably the way you raise that also matters a lawyer should look like a hero in the court the way in which he raises the way in which he stands some lawyers i have seen that uh, they don't even stand on their two legs why you must always stand on in army there's a principle you should never be on one leg you should always be on two legs be it in attention or in stand at ease you should always be in two legs and human beings ought to be in two legs therefore a lawyer should always stand in two legs not in a single leaning over you should stand upright and when you say something you must stand upright and say putting your hands in the pocket and yesterday some of my friend was sharing that uh, uh, just to frittering your hands by tying behind or rolling the pencils all these are signs of nervousness you can afford to be nervous at the beginning but not throughout the case you can't another third thing is that when a judge wants to say something that moment you must stop you shall not be heard uttering even a single word when the judge attempts to say something a talking judge is the greatest blessing for the bar we might have come across two sides of uh, two sets of judges some judges who are always mute some judges who are always sharing a sharing judge is the greatest benefit for the lawyer community because we can understand what is passing on in their mind others will sit mute you do not know whether they are catching your point whether they are understanding at the end of the judgment may come you have to wait to understand their mind yet sharing judge or a talking judge is always a great blessing for the bar when you the judge attempts to talk not even uttering a word when he the moment he shows his face to talk there ends your talk no further words shall be uttered 
you must give a very patient hearing to the judge because there's a great blessing you will understand what is in his mind so secondly you are it's a sign of showing respect to the court also you must listen every word is going to be a magical mantra for you to understand your position in the case that is again a matter of respect also therefore these are all the small small things of uh, communication that's why you we use the word, uh, the uh, term communication instead of advocacy communication is composed of several facets as i said the communication with the client communicating communication with the court and the thirdly communication at the bar or in the society as a lawyer first of all remember whatever happens in the court definitely the lawyers have the privilege of discussions at the bar room or at the bar library never outside because that is the place of privilege where you can comment upon the judges where you can comment upon your colleagues and do whatever you like regarding the communication matters but beyond the court don't take anything don't cultivate the habit of commenting upon the particular judges because as human beings are different judges are also different we have to sail with the system the more you talk ill of the courts outside you are just digging the grave for yourself and slowly slowly the sand beneath your feet will be just moving at one moment you will fall down when the system falls down you can't stand alone and alone you will have to fall with the system therefore it is our bounden duty to uphold the majesty of the court everywhere people always look at the lawyers why they look at the lawyers as the replica of the court during emergency nani palkewala makes one statement whenever the nation faced some crisis the whole lot of people just look at the face of the lawyer their response will be the lawyer's response how the lawyers respond there that will be the response of the people because they reposed that much confidence on the lawyer when you talk or when you communicate with the society outside the bar room by commenting upon the system here that is not at all good i am not talking about the constructive criticism of the system that you can always do but denigrating the system is something very destructive of the system as well as ourselves very very important and uh, some people have that uh, literary flavor in their language say for example fali nariman soli swarab ji and uh, nani palkiwala these people have that uh, literary talents though they are great literates because they uh, soli swarab ji and uh, nani palkiwala they had their masters in english literature in st xavier's college uh, bombay therefore they are well versed in literature that does not mean that we should not concentrate on literature i always recommend to you once you want to be a lawyer once you continue to be a legal professional it shall be our most essential job to read some classics at some time in a week at least a few passages of classics very very important because at the end of the day the fate of your client hangs on the words you employ words are our weapons if you read uh, the of uh, the prelude given by justice v r krishna in one of his famous books law society and the collective consciousness he says for the lawyer words are his swords and pens are his guns these are the two things the lawyer does he writes the pleadings or the opinions that is the pen and he argues addresses the court by using the words so the words are going to be his swords and the pens are going to be his guns this this armory you must keep on developing you must keep on polishing that is very very essential unless you are able to communicate what you think no word is a perfect communicant because words are recognized as the vehicles of thought you can't find an exact exactitude or a word which is exactly reflecting your thought 
because language is not the perfect medium of communication but we must be able to find the most proximate word to give expression to our thoughts when your rich thoughts do not have rich words to communicate your thoughts will be of no use therefore reading literature and some kind of classics is very very important this is what lord denning says just i would uh, read to you only one or two lines i may circulate to you a few copies i have of this uh, mm -hmm. you can circulate now just is putting avanga da ella padichu paakala avanga see this is uh, the extract of the book lord denning's the discipline of law and just i am trying to quote you one or two sentences of that there is a topic called the command of language the tools of trade if you take the first page the tools of trade to succeed in the profession of the law you must seek to cultivate a command of language words or the law is a tools of trade when you are called upon to address a judge it is your words which count most it is by them that you will hope to persuade the judge of the righteousness of your cause on the words you use your client's future may depend the reason why words are so important is because words are the vehicles of thought when you are working out a problem of your own at your desk or walking home you think in words not in symbols or numbers when you are advising your client in writing or by word of mouth you must use words there is no other means available to do it convincingly to do it simply and clearly if others find it difficult to understand you it will often be because you have not cleared your own mind upon it obscurity in thought inexorably leads to obscurity in language see this is a very important statement obscurity in thought inexorably leads to obscurity in language first of all your thoughts must be clear then only your language or your words will be clear to make the thoughts clear it needs preparation because nothing is uh, more essential than acute preparation for a lawyer when you are fully prepared your mind will be clear your thoughts will be clear and obviously your language will be clear otherwise obscurity in thought inexorably leads to obscurity in language and what he says is that after switching over to uh law the third page just a five or six lines from the top i have them still then what he says is that he started reading literature i had read much of shakespeare and many of our poets and novelists while still at school all my prizes from the age of 11 were for english i have them still bound in handsome leather with the school crest and the date ad 1569 the titles in succession are the great authors macaulay carlyle and milton and a large number of uh, other authors also he states down below and regarding the practice what he says is the next i had to practice continually as a pianist practices the piano so the lawyer should practice the use of words both in writing and by word of mouth so also he talks about the other methods of communication namely address speech manners arguments to be brief not long winding nervousness as i told in the beginning the last page almost in the middle at the, the top line i was too shy also too nervous a person who was born in england who studied in oxford that is post graduation then again reading law when he himself felt i was too shy also too nervous there is absolutely enough justification for us to be nervous and shy therefore nothing to fear about and he says that i had this nervousness till my last days as a lawyer one thing you will not be able to avoid the nervousness before the case starts every advocate knows it in a way it helps so long as it is not too much that is why i used to sometimes fail 
my clerk as a good clerk should told me of it i was anxious to win and so tense that my voice became too high pitched i never quit i never quite got over it even as a king's counsel king's counsel is a senior advocate even lord denning the most accomplished judge of the 20th century as a king's counsel he himself had nervousness till the end there is enough justification for us to have it nothing to worry about nervousness and there just a, the few lines above in the middle of the first paragraph he says your appearance means a lot that is another may way of communication your very appearance communicates your appearance means a lot dress neatly not slovenly be well groomed your voice must be pleasing not harsh or discordant pitch it so that all can hear without a strain pronounce your consonants do not slur your words speak not too fast nor yet too slow all these things are common place but they are so often forgotten that i warn you against the mistakes i see made daily no hands in pockets it shows slovenliness slovenliness no fidgeting with pencil or with gown it shows nervousness no whispering with the neighbors it shows shows less lack of respect so also a few lines below don't be dull don't repeat yourself too often don't be long winded all these lose your hearers hearers and once you have lost them you are done for you can never get them back because we all experience in courts that once we lost the attention of the court it will be very very hard to get that attention back this is one experience which i wanted to share that is from the bench who had an immense uh, lucrative practice as a lawyer and he later became a judge just i would conclude by taking the example of one who has all along been at the bar that is no other person than fali nariman he has uh, authored an article which is published sometime in uh, 2013 6 scc journal section 1 where he shares uh, some of his uh, experience at the bar regarding communication he gives some hints for us one or two hints i would like to share with you he says that your speech must be less if you have chosen law practice in court as your career then be regular in court and when you attend court keep your mind alert and receptive your wits sharpened but not your tongue when wearing a black coat and gown the less you speak at the initial stages of your career the better like the old man who lived in an oak the more he saw the less he spoke the less he spoke the more he heard why can't you be like that bird he is quoting some uh, poem then he says that to cultivate the art of brevity and he quotes two examples one is the first attorney general of india motilal settleward and the first solicitor general of india who became the second attorney general ck daftari for their brevity of expressions and both of them you might have heard or read his book their books very fantastic in their writing skills obviously they must have had the same skills in speaking as well he recommends the the junior members of the bar just come here from time to time and look upon these portraits of these men they will inspire you so looking at the portraits here we have portraits like uh, that of uh, mk nambiar the father of kk venugopal the the earliest constitutional lawyer from the madras bar and very great people like uh, um c natarajan sorry s natarajan yes several people yes yeah. hr khanna also hr khanna you know what he said about uh, nani palkiwala when he retired on the date of his retirement he just at the bar function farewell function he wanted to share some uh, idea about palkiwala with the bar what he said was i wish to give a caution to the judges don't ever attempt to deliver judgments as soon as you hear nani palkiwala allow some space for the spell to vanish therefore 
this is the kind of spell they created in court and it was a word of caution by one of the most eminent judges of the supreme court the co judges don't ever attempt to deliver judgments soon after hearing nani palki wala allow some space for the spell to vanish and one of the greatest lawyers in england he had a son who was a magician and one day the son was just uh, telling sharing with the father we both are doing the same job by the flutter of hands we make a show things as though they are there but which are not there and this magical skill the skill of a magician is not so easy if a lawyer is able to acquire that skill that will be the attainment when he can play magic in the courts but it's not by fluttering hands but by using words which are magical words have that much tremendous power if you read bible genesis doesn't speak about what existed in the beginning but the chapter of romans talk about what was existent in the beginning bible says in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god so word that is letters was depicted as god himself and human beings we are different from animals or with other uh, uh, creations why because we are capable of uttering words when we are able to have that different and distinct quality only because of the words the the skill of communication you just imagine what would be the importance of communication and really i always believe that lawyers are the most blessed people in the world for two reasons one they have the habit of keeping on learning secondly every day you find a platform to show whatever you learn fali nariman also says one or two things again namely the quality of seeing and listening your eyes and ears must be very adept very vigilant in the court don't ever make a judge to tell things twice to you because you have one case he has thousand cases and if every lawyer asks him twice to tell he will become weak in the evening therefore your eyes and ears must be very vigilant and you must learn the art of seeing and listening that is again part of communication then create impressions in the court Some, sometimes we argue cases very effectively but ultimately the case you lose but please remember you are winning the court you are only losing the case but winning the court the problem arises in two ways one is when you give a very effective argument in a case and lose the judge will be waiting for doing a favor to you in another case and his obviously his expectation would be that you would argue in the same effective way in the next case if you don't do that you are disappointing the court secondly when the judge expects you sets his impressions on you like that you must always try to live up to that therefore don't be annoyed or don't be disappointed when you lose a case after an effective argument because argument is the lawyer's duty judgment is the duty of the judge it is not your duty all our job is to put forth our case in the most effective way and wait for the judge's opinion and he again says that no show off even if you are fully learned if you are fully prepared in the case even then don't show that you are as the no all in the end all as though you know everything and don't try to make fun in the court fun is not an effective communication you can make fun certainly but only upon yourself you can make you yourself as a laughing stock but don't ever try to laugh at the cost of another even your opponent that's very important don't be boring sometimes we have the habit of uh, thinking that why the judge is sitting mute unexpressive does he not understand my case therefore keeping on telling the things silent judges are faster in understanding that we must remember always take it for granted that the judges have understood that's why we say even before saying that as your lordship knows he may not know 
you must make him know and don't try to see, expect a reaction from him that as though he knows it judges would know but one the, the moment you repeat the same point again and again it will be a boring affair and the efficacy of the case will be lost and he says why this boring is very dangerous is because fali nariman uh, even i myself had seen in his chambers the long oval table there is a very big portrait of an american cartoonist where the judge has gone sleep has gone asleep and this lawyer he is prompting the court officer saying go and wake go and wake him up the court officer reacts to the lawyer saying that you wake him up because you only put him to sleep <laughs> this is the cartoon which is maintained kept and maintained in the fali nariman's chamber which he has shared in this article also therefore these are all the few bits and uh, pieces of uh, uh, experiences what i had undergone as a lawyer and i wished to, to share with you and now i think that it is too long now uh, it's time for us to enter into this main part <laughs> the interaction and the honorable mr justice uh, uh, anand vikdesh is concerned please don't take him for granted as a justice now because in the madras bar association even after becoming a justice he never gave up the habit of coming to the bar association for the evening tea invariably on all days a judge walking into the lawyer's uh, place and having a cup of tea the moment he enters the bar is absolutely a member of the bar and i would request uh, his lordship justice anand vengadesh to give the closing remarks good to see such a crowd at 645 that's the most uh, important thing which i see there are there are there is a crowd waiting outside such a crowd at 645 um that's very encouraging really really encouraging once a lawyer always a lawyer this judge position is a very temporary phase for me so has the senior advocate said the lawyer in me every time overwhelms me that's why many times i become a very talkative judge even as a judge the lawyer in me continues to uh, influence me i start arguing against the counsel and then i have to contain myself and remind myself that now you are in a different position altogether stop it uh, in while while sitting in a division bench with justice uh, satish kumar on that famous case which was referred to us section 110 of the crpc the scope of section 101 122 1b of crpc the third hearing uh, i think it's janardhanan the law weekly editor who was arguing i went on a rampage against him meaning i was not shouting at him i was virtually replaying giving the reply arguments for whatever arguments he was uh, doing just satish kumar was <laughs> waiting for 10 minutes then he slowly caught hold of my hand and he said wait counsel he said anand he you are no longer an advocate <laughs> you, you you have become a judge what is happening i said i brother i don't know meaning it's it's there in me and it's it's something which i have experienced for nearly 25 years and um, it becomes very difficult to get rid of it that's why i said that once a mortgage always a mortgage mari once an advocate you are always an advocate till the last breath that's why in one of the quash petitions which came before me while i was sitting there it was a case where a boisterous advocate was made as an accused what had happened was that he was uh, uh, he was assisting his client he had filed a suit pertaining to a particular property and uh, the local authority was claiming a title over that property so he had filed a suit sought for the relief etc during that proceeding the authorities had come to the spot so they were trying to survey measure the property the client had called this advocate so this advocate with all enthusiasm went there as an advocate we cannot express ourselves so calmly as the learned senior counsel says most of the time we become very boisterous even when we do drunken driving 
we scream at the police as if he has committed something wrong so meaning it becomes our nature to express ourselves like that i'm i'm talking about some extreme cases i'm not suggesting that you should behave like that so it becomes our nature to express strongly so where is the line to be drawn is what the learned senior counsel was saying uh, many times i find uh, uh, submissions made before court which the judge is not even able to hear and when such, such submissions are made by lady juniors i tell them idan namba solreya nu kepen unga veetla ipdi dhan pesuriya nee illa unga husband kitta ipdi dhan pesuringala neenga so the issue is how far do you express yourself that's the issue so while writing that order uh, i found that this advocate went to the spot uh, probably he had expressed himself uh, a bit boisterously to the local authorities so he was made a2 in that case so the quash petition came then i wrote in the order that uh, the demeanor of an advocate is always different from the demeanor of uh, a layman we react not in the way even in our real life uh, even outside the court wherever we go the demeanor of an advocate is very different if we are if we keenly watch we will understand that even without he introducing himself as an advocate we will see our advocate a irparo apdindra or impression namalukku varadhu kaaranam our nature becomes like that we express ourselves like that see even while i am talking from here look at the way i am expressing ipo nane na remain panirey and ivlo nadikira abdin but this is how we express ourselves i don't know we for for years together we have expressed ourselves in the court for our client in order to put forth something strongly in order to ensure that an order is secured for the for the client to not to ensure that justice is rendered we continuously keep expressing ourselves this way at one stage it becomes our nature and therefore i said that the advocate would have reacted more strongly than his client but then he never had an intention to commit a offense there he at the best was only trying to defend the rights of his client and therefore i quashed that fir for the in so far as that advocate is concerned when i wrote that order i the advocate in me woke up uh, that's what i am attempting to see see every time uh, even now the most happiest thing for me to be in the midst of advocates it has become a habit for me like what he says sitting alone in the chamber continuously sometimes you become insane and people don't allow you to move suddenly the pso will come the dafeda will come he will start to uh, he will start saying something they will not allow you to be what you are it's a big disadvantage as a judge is what uh, i would say so even though there was no specific invitation for me to come here i came here because i am an advocate inside and we keep learning on a daily basis nobody knows ella therinja all nor the kadaiye kedaiyad we keep learning on a daily basis two three things which i learned from him two three things which i learned from mr armugam two three things which i learned from what he said two three things which what the other said one thing which that student said that student said that sir i came here and after listening to you the student is now getting an inspiration that fine okay so it's not as if i am fearing enak inda tension irukku adanal inda professional nammala panna mudiyadho nu enna pala poiidichu avarku evlo periya position ku ponala inda light attention irukum pol irukku adanal adanal vandu nam inda professional la varamudiyadhu apdin oru he would have had his own impression about it apdinradala illama poi irukum then the most important thing which i found uh, in uh, what mr isaac mohanlal said was you must read everything that is that comes into your hand uh, as an advocate uh, if you just read law you will be the most boring person in the world eppa pathalum or 15 nimisham pesina 
அந்த பதினஞ்சு நிமிஷத்தில் பன்னெண்டு நிமிஷம் பிளெயின் டிவி இதை சொன்னால் இவர் சொன்னால் இந்த லால அதை சொன்னால் இந்த ஜட்மெண்ட்டை பார்த்தியா நம்ம ஃபஸ்ட்டு நம்மெல்லாம் ஹியூமன் பீயிங்ஸ் இல்லையா அட்வொகேட்ஸ் அட்வொகேட்டாக இருக்கிறதுன்றது நம்மளுடைய தொழில் இட்ஸ் அவர் பிரெட் அண்ட் பட்டர் பட் தட் டஸ் நாட் மீன் தட் வீல் ஜஸ்ட் கன்ஃபைன் அவர் செல்ஸ் ஓன்லி டு த லா அண்ட் த புக்ஸ் பர்டெய்னிங் டு லா யூ வில் பிகம் ஒன் ஆஃப் த மோஸ்ட் ட்ராகிங் பர்சனாலிட்டி பட் வாட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் ஆஸ் இ ரைட்லி சேஸ் இஸ் தட் you should read a lot you should see a lot for instance my habit is i watch almost all the latest movies i mean ye alavukku yaravadhu inga inda edathla padam paathirupingala endradhu highly doubtful amazon netflix sony live ellathiliyum garagadan poi enna enna irukku endradha paathittu adhaadhu av daily ennala stand up pola paakkuradhukku time irukadhu so i will watch 40 40 minutes daily and finish it off so in, in in fact recently i watched this uh, uh, this da, this uh, serial about the harshad mehta that scam it was so fantastic it was so revealing because that happened at the time when i was coming up in the profession when when i was an advocate in the profession and what all happened how ram jethmilani came into the scene how he turned the whole case etc so if there is something to learn from everything and it applies more to an advocate for an advocate in order to remain to be smart in order to be more interesting at the end of the day in the court a judge after looking at an advocate must feel comfortable with him it what he said was all psychology at the end of the day there is no there is no bending back and uh, trying to please the judge and all that it never works like that you must have brought yourself to such a stature that the judge would want to hear you in the court if that happens then you have achieved your best as an advocate you have achieved your best forget about the results you have achieved your best where the court finds very comfortable to deal with you i i i don't know whether you understand what i am saying uh meaning when the counsel gets up from tomorrow onwards just keenly notice in all the courts look at the face of the judge right idu idu na idu ne please paarunga adu poittu the reaction of the judge to different advocates romba vithyasama irukum sila pera vandu mudinja varaikum avoid panni thatti vida paapanga sila pera vandu pesa uduvaanga sila per pesumbodhu vaay moodi nirpaanga எதையாவது சொன்னா பேச்சு ஜாஸ்தி ஆகும்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஹவு டஸ் தட் ஹேப்பன் நீங்க நல்லா யோசிங்க ஹவு டஸ் தட் ஹேப்பன் வை இஸ் இட் அவரும் அவருடைய கிளையண்டினுடைய கேஸை தான் ஆர்கியூ பண்றாரு அவரும் சட்டம் தான் சொல்றாரு அது எப்படி ஜட்ஜினுடைய முகமும் ஜட்ஜினுடைய ஆட்டிடியூடும் எப்படி அட்வொகேட்டுக்கு அட்வொகேட் மாறும் அதை வச்சுட்டு ரிசல்ட் மாறும் நான் சொல்ல வரல அட் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் த டே லெட் அஸ் மேக் இட் கிளியர் that what is there in the paper decides it what is the issue involved decides the case it is not because a is appearing b is appearing if you have any such impressions as a junior please take it out and throw it away it does not work always it does not work with all judges so but the comfort level of the judge makes a lot of impact in a case for instance in a in a margin case this way that way illada or case la that will tilt the balance or interim order it will tilt the balance let me put it this way a judge who feels very comfortable a judge who thinks that this man will come up with the true facts he will not conceal things he will not mislead the court or mari 50% case la interim order kadachiru adhalla idella tips na tharen அண்ட் இது நான் சொல்கிறதெல்லாம் புதுசு இல்லை இது காலாகாலமாக நடந்துகிட்டு இருக்கிற ஒரு விஷயம் ஸோ தீஸ் ஆர் திங்ஸ் விச் ஆர் வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் எட் அனதர் திங் விச் ஈ செட் வாஸ் டோன்ட் ட்ரை டு லெக்சர் எ ஜட்ஜ் கரெக்ட் பிகாஸ் ஜட்ஜஸ் ஆர் சிட்டிங் தேர் வித் ப்ளோட்டட் ஈகோஸ் உண்மை த பெஸ்ட் வே டு டெஸ்ட் அ பர்சன் இஸ் டு கிவ் த பவர் டு தட் பர்சன் just give the power to that person you will know what that person is who that person is i want to test panna na idhu the best test 
எனக்கு தெரிஞ்சு ஸோ ஏ ஜட் சிட்ஸ் வித் த ப்ளோட்டட் ஈகோ ஹீ திங்ஸ் தட் ஹீ இஸ் த ஒன் ஹூ இஸ் டிசைடிங் எவ்ரி திங் அண்ட் ஸோ அந்த ஒரு ஈகோ இருக்கும் ஒன்றுமே தெரியலனாலும் எல்லாமே தெரிஞ்ச மாதிரி ஒரு முகபாவனையோடு உட்காடுறது ரீசெண்ட்லி ஜஸ்டிஸ் ராம்குமார் ரோட் அன் ஆர்டிக்கல் மீனிங் ஹீ ஜஸ்ட் பிளாஸ்டட் தி ஹைகோர்ட் ஜட்ஜஸ் ஹீ ரோட் அன் ஆர்டிக்கல் அபவுட் ஹவு பேட்லி ஜட்ஜ்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் ரிட்டன் பை த சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் வித் ஒன் ஜட் பெஞ்ச் செய்யிங் ஒன் திங் அதர் பெஞ்ச் செய்யிங் அதர் திங் அண்ட் இன் சம் அண்ட் இன் சம் ஜட்ஜ்மெண்ட்ஸ் ஃபண்டமெண்டல் ப்ரொசீஜர்ஸ் தேர் இஸ் அ மிஸ்டேக் ஆஸ் தி சேஸ் committing mistakes is no problem to err is human therefore we will commit mistakes but the problem is you not willing to learn he says the high court judges who are asked to go to the national judicial academy to equip themselves are treating it more like a paid holiday these are the words which are used by him he said just because you have become a high court judge just because you are on the topmost court namely the supreme court of india don't think that you know everything you will falter in the most fundamental of uh, the law which uh, which which you think you know so the next important lesson as he rightly says is that we have to have the attitude of learning on a daily basis we if your eyes and ears are kept sharp as he said something will be seen by you something will be heard by you and that will be a change that will be a game changer for a case which is before you you would be thinking as to which point i may have to raise in this suddenly somebody in the court will argue or cite something which will be an answer for your case but this will happen only if you keep your eyes and ears open without staring at the mobile phones I mean, it's a huge distraction. I'm, I'm extremely sorry. It's a distraction even for us. So, let me not say that it's, mobile phone is all actually a distraction for me also. There is no doubt about it. I concede that. That's why most of the time, I just don't carry the mobile phone. If you don't say anything, you don't have a useless WhatsApp message. Something it distracts. So, today the biggest challenge for the junior advocates is distraction. lack of focus goldman in his book says that in today's world the most challenging thing that will be faced by humanity is lack of focus and the scientific developments are going to eat all your focus because as i repeatedly say for you to focus in something and completely get engrossed into it it takes 25 minutes minimum is what the neuroscience says and if you get distracted for any reason to again reach that position it will take 30 minutes think about a person who gets distracted every minute every second because of his mobile because of his gadgets there is no focus at all if there is no focus then it is very difficult in this profession this profession for the sustainability in this profession it requires lot of work lot of reading lot of focus lot of assimilation lot of uh, uh, thinking about that case meaning you will have to keep chewing is what he said the, your success is not just reading papers after you read the papers how you chew it how you reflect on it how you think about it and ultimately your delivery will depend upon this exercise which you did and for that distraction is a very very big uh, issue which i think everybody is uh, facing and i feel sorry for the youngsters today because they are starting with a disadvantage today it's very easy to advise them but then what are you going to do with that gadget in his hand and he gets all answers in his phone he has stopped reading if you ask him a judgment he come he, he comes up with 25 judgments does not know what the ratio is in that judgment does not know that one small fact will completely change the entire scope of that judgment will make a sea change all that is gone because everything is easy everything he gets from the gadgets and as he rightly says just because you study in national law schools don't don't think that you know everything meaning uh, something gets into their head i'm i'm very happy to see that they are 
they are they are so well prepared in those schools with uh, the type of subjects that are taught to them but that's not uh, the the end of it Advo there is something more to your success in the profession than the knowledge of law you have knowledge of law is a small portion which you must have but there are 100 other things so there are lots of things to take to take home and reflect from what uh, the learned senior advocate uh, said and even i have a lot of things to think about from what he said and i'm so happy to be in the midst of uh, advocates so even if i am not invited i will keep coming like this and you will have to tolerate thank you thank you so much lord chief and thank you so much for a great wonderful sessions lord i would like to invite mr ayram k selva kumar general secretary mmba to propose the vote of thanks anaivarkum vanakkam it really gives me immense pleasure to offer my vote of thanks on the occasion of uh, the mmb equin designer lecture series that was uh, led by the lana senior council the morgan day of the our bar uh, uh, with respect to the senior council i would like to mention a quote of from the vetti vetke ivude ivude sola matamiyal poi polume poi polume பொய் உடைவினுடைய சொல் உண்மையால் மெய் போலுமே மெய் போலுமே இது வந்து என்ன திறமை என்ன இருந்தாலும் வச்சாலும் போனாலும் நம்மகிட்ட நல்லா சொல் உண்மையோ சொல் இல்லாவிட்டால் அது வந்து உண்மை பொய்யாயிரும் பொய் உண்மையாயிரும் அதில் வந்து ஒரு எஃபெக்டிவ் கம்யூனிகேஷன் பிஃபோர் தி கோர்ட் வி ஹவ் டு லேர்ன் மோர் ஃப்ரம் த லிசனிங் ஆஃப் சீனியர் கவுன்சில் ஆர்கியூமெண்ட் வேர் எவர் ஹி டஸ் அண்ட் த மெடஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி டைட் ஷெடியூல் on behalf of mmb i would like to offer my sincere thanks to the the judge of the present uh, lordship justice in anand vangadesh as a listener katalin ketal nandru as a listener he is a uh, certain example for us even uh, breaking all sort of protocols and other thing today he is present here and uh, the spellbound uh, lecture and the interaction given by the senior council would lead a great impact among the young juniors and uh, as well as the all the councils those who are present and those who would uh, listen this inter- this session by way of youtube and other things so my sincere thanks to the senior council and by way of uh, uh, a great applause we can uh, share the uh, <laughs> and my sincere thanks to the senior council mr t s vengadramana and our former chairman madam krishnaveni ma'am and uh, all the other bar, members of the other bar uh, they, this is a great effort uh, the one among the uh, persons uh, those who initiated this uh, event uh, our sincere thanks to mr dr nyana sairan and our uh, president mr sinivas raghavan thank you one and all thank you